Hi friends, uh, in this video we will discuss about the population balance model as well as we will try to solve an uh, example using ANSYS fluent how to implement this population balance model. Uh, so in general the population balance model will be used for uh, sprayers or discrete phase particles or uh, if any bubbles are there. So in those kind of scenarios we can use the population balance method. How different is from the discrete phase model? So in the discrete phase model we will try to use the Lagrangian uh, phase uh, modeling uh, or the Lagrangian modeling in which we will try to solve for each and every particle track and we will keep the information and we will update it. But it is very cumbersome, it is very time consuming. But whereas in the population balance model, we will try to calculate uh, the mean diameter or the variance of the diameters, the distribution of the population with respect to a continuous variable instead of a uh, Lagrangian frame in sense. So this continuous in sense will uh, reduce a lot of time compared to the discrete phase where we need to solve for each and every individual particle. So here we will try to solve it for the on a whole sense for a continuous phase. So now as you can see on the screen, so these are the particles uh, which will nucleate due to the condensation or anything that can be nucleated. Once the nucleated particles are there, so there can be increase in the size of the particles that is called growth of the particles. Once there is a growth, there is every chance that they can coagulate or agglomerate into you know, small small uh, droplets can agglomerate into big droplets. Again, those big droplets can break down into small droplets. So all this kind of phenomena can happen in the droplet structure okay so one can be nucleated it can grow it can agglomerate and coagulate again it can break down into small small pieces so all these phenomena need to be included inside any discrete phase modeling or any uh, modeling where we are bothered about discrete phase right so how can we involve that in the population balance model so, so this is a particle state vector which denotes the particle state with respect to the position as well as with respect to phi. Phi can be any variable. For example, phi can be, uh, you can take phi as, uh, uh, maybe you can take phi to be like uh, volume of the particle or fraction of the particle or temperature of the particle. So uh, anything of this nature can be the phi. So if you try to calculate the total number of particles of a specific volume present in a specific location, within the volume of dvx dvx is the location so if you can say dvx can be this location which is at a distance of x bar that is dvx in this dvx volume what are the number of particles with a certain temperature maybe 393 kelvin right so this equation or this formula helps us to identify what are the number of particles that are present in the dvx volume with a temperature of 393 kelvin that is a phi variable what it does mean is this is a particle state vector now if you want to calculate the total number of particles in the entire system simply we need to integrate over the entire domain with respect to the temperature uh, phi variable as well as the entire space domain so this is the gives us the total number of particles of the entire domain. So as we know, we will try to uh, discretize the differential equation in order to solve uh, for any CFD problem. So this would be our equation what that need to be solved along with our Navier-Stokes equations and the continuity equation and energy equation in order to find that extra population term how the particles are being distributed, how the particles have the volume fraction at different levels and different uh, uh, points all those things can be used uh, calculate using this formula so this formula as you know this is nothing but uh, this v instead of phi as uh, temperature 393 kelvin now we are taking volume of the particle as a phi variable so at a time or at a specific time the rate of change of the volume of the particles with respect to that time plus the growth of the particles the particles can also grow right is equals to birth due to aggregation the particles can give or the new particles can form due to the aggregation or agglomeration and death due to aggregation there can be certain particles can be died due to the aggregation again there can be certain particles that can be generated due to breakage again some particles can be died due to the breakage so the total rate of the particle change is equals to 
or plus the growth term or plus the change in the number of uh, size of the growth of the particles is equals to birth due to aggregation minus death due to aggregation plus birth due to breakage and death due to breakage this is a simplified formula what you have given here you can just see so what represents the growth so doin doin by dot is nothing but particle formation due to nucleation aggregation condensation fragmentation so this is a general formula what we are uh, considering here so this is the equation what we will try to go with the in ansi fluent so rate of change of particle volume which have all these terms now the particle growth is nothing but change in volume again change in volume is nothing but change in length that is a term term what we exactly depends on so now v can be defined as kv into l cube if it is a sphere kv is nothing but pi by 6 l is nothing but diameter pi by 6 d cube right so if you consider it as pi by 6 d cube so now rho v by dot is nothing but 3 kv l square g that is obvious right because uh, instead of l if you try to keep v as kv l cube so finally it will be left with 3 into 3 l square into do l by dot do l by dot is nothing but g this gv term is nothing but the growth of the particle so this growth of the particle can be a constant growth or it can be a variable variable growth depending on the amount of moisture or amount of any other variable that is present in the cell and when the particle is present in that cell okay so this is helps in understanding the particle growth again breakage kernel and death due to breakage so breakage uh, if there is initial volume v not or v prime so due to the breakage there is a formation of a v volume and what are the number of particles that are formed due to this is given by this formula where it from v dash to v this is the form birth rate of the extra particles and this is the death rate due to breakage because as you are seeing the v is forming obviously v will be died right so that that rate is given by dbr next then then there will be breakage frequency so breakage frequency can be calculated using different uh, proposals given by scientists like leo leher or kedry breakage kernels so all these things are different breakage frequencies what we really bother how much breakage is happening per meter cube per second is given by this uh, terminologies or this uh, scientists preferred things so you can see uh, it again breakage depends on the size of the adc here size of the adc is given by lambda so when a size of uh, a d lambda is hitting a diameter d then the breakage can be formed in this way this is proposed by one scientist and here uh, you can see the particle size uh, is very low then uh the particle size is very low then you will go for the different breakage models and if the particle is very solid in nature it's not like a, a bubble or anything then you will go with the gadri breakage kernel he proposed for uh, a solid particles uh, breaking depending on the particle density elastic modulus of granule and impact velocity depending on all these things we can use the gadri breakage kernel models for the particle solids instead of having it uh, bubbles similar aggregation model so when the two particles or the two bubbles come and aggregate each other then there will be new birth right so that birth is given by this equation similarly due to the birth obviously there will be death the death is due to this v and that is given by this equation and there will be different lu aggregation kernels again like breakage frequency there will be aggregation frequency also that has been calculated using these terms right in this you can see p aggregate which is nothing but a probability uh, distribution with respect to vi and vj so this lu aggregation kernel when if uh, the aggregation or anything if the particles are less than 1 micron so that there will be a brownian motion comes into an act so in that case so there will be no interdependence of those two particles so li and lg can be separately treated as the two different particles interacting each other or interacting i mean two bubbles interacting each other instead of having a continuous uh, or sorry instead of having a dependency between those two things now so in the population balance method there are different methodologies that been implemented one is discrete method and another is method of mints so in the discrete method there are again a subdivision of homogeneous discrete and inhomogeneous discrete then in the method of mints there is standard method of mints quadrature method of mints discrete quadrature method of mints and uh, the I mean dqo mom so if you come to that exact definition so now what well, this can be a distribution so with this distribution what does it mean the average particle dia is at this location so all the time we will not bother about the particle uh, 
how the particle size is being been distributed we may bother about only the mean diameter of the particle and the variance of the particles and other type of uh, inputs that are required for the particles it's not always necessary that we are bother about uh, uh, the number of particles that are been present and the uh, size uh, how it is been distributed from what diameter to what diameter all those things we can all uh, we can also have a required uh, mean or variance also right so when you want to have a certain discretization for example this is the entire range of the particles maybe from 1 to 100 right now we cannot have all this 1 to 100 micrometer particle uh, number on to their simulation if you have all these things then it is uh, discrete phase modeling but we are going with pop population balance modeling in which we will have only average distributions so what we will do here in discrete method we will try to split this range into bins so now i have split this into four pins so maybe from 1 to 25 it will be in this bin 25 to 50 into this bin 50 to 75 in this bin and 75 to 100 in this bin right so now we are distributing the particle range of diameters to each bin and we will try to solve each bin as a different transport equation and we will try to add up the breakage aggregation kernels everything into this transport equation you understood so it's like we are trying to solve the range of the diameter as a transport equation and we are trying to use the breakage and aggregation kernels such that the diameter may increase to 50 or may decrease to 50 or sorry 25 with respect to time so this is a time dependency solving what we are trying to do in order to have the particle distribution that is being splitted into different different bins so that is called homogeneous discrete right so you can see particle population was discreted into finitized set and the fraction of bubble size class j is calculated upon vj by vj minus 1 into 2 power q i mean what are the volume of the particles present in this what are the volume of the particles present in this bin this bin this bin you don't have any control to split this bin directly but you need to give this power q so depending on the power q the value of the q what you will give automatically the bins will be splitted accordingly okay I mean the volume of the particles that should be present in each bin will be split accordingly right so all size bins are assigned with the same secondary phase obviously so now there is a primary phase of water liquid for example and air is being injected into this water liquid right now whatever the size of the part uh, bins can be maybe 0 to 25 or 50 to 75 or uh, 75 to 100 all these distributed bin sizes what are present inside an individual cell will have same velocity right in, in spite of having a different dias or different bin width but in the same cell it will have same velocity so that is a big uh, uh, what can we say a hurdle in order to calculate the exact methodology right but if you go with inhomogeneous model we can split these bins not as a single phase but we can keep it as a three to four phases and in each phase again we can have a separate bin structures so now each phase inside a cell can have a different velocities right it's like that for example now i'll take this now there are three bins one two and three sorry three phases not three bins three phases and each phase has three bins so now I will denote this range of particles as 1, these range of particles as 2. I mean, these belongs to first phase, these belong to second phase. Even though these two phases are present in the same cell, these can have a different velocities, so which will be helpful as uh, helpful in order to capture perfect or accurate methodology instead of going with a single velocity of the secondary phase will have a so many phases which has a different bins and each bin can have a different velocity in the cell okay this is the inhomogeneous model which is much more accurate now 
going to method of movements so what is method of movements so in the method of movements we don't solve this uh, discretization of bins and try, don't try to solve the bins as an equation what we will do we will try to create a moment what is this moment so the moment can be like a particle or droplet size that is been multiplied with the distribution okay so x can be a particle size or x can be uh, a density or x can be anything x can be flux when it is uh, multiplied with a distribution particles distribution or probability distribution function what i mean to say so if you try to multiply with this probability distribution function like this can be a probability distribution function what we are trying to multiply right so now this x will be the probability distribution function is multiplied with size in order to get this moment m0 if it is multiplied with another values m1 again m2 m3 we are trying to solve these moments individually as individual transport equations in order to calculate the mean or variance of the particle size distribution so we will try to uh, frame this uh, method of moments or it can be like a standard method of moments in such a way that the distribution what we are trying to say is a standard distribution so we are trying to replicate our uh, population or particles that are present inside the uh, uh, vessel or anything such that it is exactly matching with this distribution so we are forcing it to match with this exact distribution so this can be happen or this can be okay when you have so many number of particles because if you have so many number of particles automatically the distribution will be a normal distribution or gaussian distribution it can be under the standard distribution functions but if the number of particles are very less then going with the standard method of moments will be again a challenging case so now you can see the differences in the standard method of moments uh, we will try to calculate the moments of distribution so moments of statistical quantities uh, like mean may variance skewness all these things can be uh, calculated so these will be used or uh, using our ordinary differential equations what we are trying to solve uh, for the different moments over time but with the quadrature method of moments what we will do is again we will try to split into different bins in this bin we will try to again have a distribution right so we are trying to mitigate that error instead of going with the complete as a continuous distribution we are trying to split this into number of bins and each bin have a separate distribution so this can be a dirichlet function where a single point function or a single point thing what we are trying to calculate so here it is separately different we don't exactly solve the equations here so what exactly we will do is we will try to calculate the uh, nodes and the uh, weight of the each point here right so each, each node have each value and we will try to assign a weight to that and we will try to uh, uh, modify this or try to solve this equation such that it matches the growth aggregation and breakage i mean taking everything into account we will try to manage or uh, such that this will match with the dirichlet function or a single point function such that the error will reduce it's like simple we are trying to solve the continuous equation for this until it matches the distribution the mean value median value variance value matches with distribution but whereas in this uh, quadrature method we will try to use a single point distribution functions for each bin here also we will try to match the distribution but only for each bin we are trying to do it it's a separate uh, formulation altogether so this helps to reduce the error we have when we have a small or limited number of particles but this uh, is okay when we have more number of particles right so you can just go through this uh, slides i'll just post these slides also uh, from uh, this is the first part of the video in the second part of video i'll try to create a uh, model and mesh and i'll show the difference between different models of uh, method of movements and breakage kernels how exactly that will create a different results altogether